What's up guys, it's RevJ again. Uh, picked up a whole bunch of new parts uh, for this season, this summer, working on the Hatred Copter out in the garage. Finally got some warm weather in, so I decided to stop out here and uh, show you guys what I picked up. First of all, I want to thank a couple of members over on the 67 to 72 Chevy Truck Forum. If you guys didn't know, I'm a member over there. I wanted to thank member uh, C10 Seconds for getting me a couple parts. He hooked it up with some uh, ARP connecting rod bolts for the LS motor. Obviously, if you guys know anything about them, you've probably heard stories uh, about some of the connecting rod bolt situations. Since eventually we're going to go for much bigger horsepower than we got, these are always a great mod. He also hooked it up with another essential mod for high horsepower tuning, and that is a wide band. This is, uh, this is a wide band from Autometer. This is the Sport Comp wide band. Um, it's got the black face, so it matches the rest of my gauges. I'm really looking forward to putting this in. And you guys are going to see this on one of the upcoming videos out here in the garage uh, on Rev JHD. Me and Sandwiches will come put this in the gauge cluster and we'll show you how to work with it. One of the biggest things we've run into over on the 67 to 72 Chevy truck forums uh, with the new LS swaps uh, is usually related to fueling. Now, a lot of times guys have stuck injectors, old fuel sitting in their tanks, and that needs to be worked out. But the biggest issue aside from that is related to fuel pressure. You hook up all these new lines, injectors, filters, etc. whether you're running return style or returnless, but you don't know for sure you're getting fuel pressure unless you have a way to monitor it. And thanks to member Little Victories for getting me this. Now if you haven't seen one of these before, they're pretty cool and they're essential in helping you figure out right away, do I have fuel pressure? This is simply a dash six AN fitting with a male and female end with an eighth inch NPT port in the top for directly hooking up a fuel gauge. And I went and bought a simple JEGS uh, fluid filled black face uh, fuel pressure gauge for 0 to 100 psi so we can measure everything we need. These LS motors run at about 58 psi. Um, you could have gone with a 60 psi gauge but I decided to go with the 100 just in case I'm over pressuring just so I have a better range to see. So we're going to go ahead and install this today. It's super quick and right away we can fire it up and see if we're getting fuel pressure to eliminate all the other problems. All right guys so we're under hood. We've got our JEGS fuel pressure gauge to be installed. We've also got the dash six to dash six AN fitting. And because there is a pipe thread on there, it's also a good idea to seal pipe threads. And so I'm using uh, some high temp uh, thread sealant. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Do not use Teflon tape. It's a bad idea. First thing we gotta do is pretty straightforward. Pull this engine cover off so we can get to the fuel rail. Got my wrench right here. And off comes the top section of the cover. And this side panel here has a stud on top. That lifts up and off. And there are two bolts uh, on the side here over the coil packs uh, that also need to come off. And then we can go ahead and uh, pull the cover off. And so now you guys can see right here, the feed line, which is the top one on the return style fuel rail is easily exposed. We gotta go ahead and undo this fitting right here, put our new fitting right in between in place right there and attach the gauge, simple as that. Now, real quick, before we get started on installing it under hood, one of the things we gotta take care of is, as I mentioned, this thread sealant, because the gauge itself uses an NPT style connection, and any pipe thread connection should use some sort of sealant. Now, do not use Teflon tape, even the yellow stuff that a lot of your old school friends might tell you is safe to use. With today's modern blends of gasoline, it's just not okay to use that. I mean, technically, it never was okay to use that. And what we're gonna do is gonna apply a little bit of uh, thread sealant to the male end right here. Just a little bit. You don't need it all the way around, just enough on the threads. Let that set up for just a quick second. And then screw it into this using an 11 millimeter wrench. So here we are, we've got our feed line right on top and this needs to come off. To do that, it's pretty simple. I've got my 5 eighths and 11 16 inch wrenchers right here. You can coat the ends with a little bit of, uh, of painter's tape if you'd like for the aluminum fittings. We're gonna be gentle so we don't have to worry about it. Obviously, if you've got uh, the big dollars for the 
Earl's uh, aluminum wrenches. That's awesome. I don't. I'm gonna go ahead. And now the thing I've made sure is that the vehicle was not run recently. There should be no pressure in this line or minimal pressure in this line. So when I pull this off, a little bit of fuel is coming to come out, not much. And, uh, and then we can go ahead, get this fitting off and get it all replaced. So loosen this just up a bit here. Broke free nice and easy. A little bit of drip, but not bad. And there we have, there's our exposed end. There is our male end off the rail. So we've got our gauge. Now it's gonna be pointing this way. So it can be red with the engine cover off. Put the male to female ends, go ahead and screw this in place. Tighten it up. And then tighten up the supply on the rail. Right here. tight all the way around this fitting was never loosened up it's still securely on the end of the uh, push to connect so before we put the engine cover and everything back on let's go ahead crank it up and make sure we're getting the pressure so the gauge is installed we've got our adequate pressure there holding on the line there is no leak anywhere around the unit so all we gotta do is throw the engine cover back on. There's no leaks, the gauge is holding pressure, the installation went pretty smoothly, and the whole thing took, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Not bad at all, just to make sure you got fuel pressure. I'm gonna button this thing up, and uh, we'll see you next time on RevJ.